the Director, Marketing Solutions India, Virginia Sharma. We all are very, very excited uh, for her. That, in, in fact, I was waiting that when is she, uh, when is she going to start? And the topic she's going to speak on is uh, unleashing the power of networking limited. So are you all ready? Great. Yes. Please put your mobile phones in an inaudible mode. It's a request before she starts. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, don't put your mobile phones away because it's going to be a very important tool for you in the next 20, 25 minutes. Um, where possible, try to sit next to somebody. Have at least one person to the left or right of you. This is the power of networking. A uh, good place to start is to network right in this room. And uh, the second thing that I would say is if you could turn on your Bluetooth uh, on your phone. Keep your phone with you. I'm totally good with it's a post lunch session. If you've just come in, please try to find somebody to sit with. Uh, it'll be good for them. It'll be good for you as you kind of discuss. So um, before I get started, uh, what we're going to do in this particular session is gonna, I'm going to give you some specific tips uh, around professional networking. Uh, so that's, that's the context. And a lot of the tips that you see over here uh, come from my personal experience. Um, just for some background, I uh, have been um, a career professional in digital for about 20 years, 20 years in March, and 15 years at IBM, so uh, very close to NASCOM uh, from that regard, and about five years at LinkedIn. But I was a very avid user of LinkedIn well before I joined the company. Now, uh, let's do a little bit, uh, this is going to be a very demanding session, I'm going to say that up front. So what we're going to start with is for everybody to stand up. Great. So sit down if you don't have a LinkedIn profile. And it's OK if you don't. OK. Sit down if you don't have a photograph on your LinkedIn profile. And it's OK if you don't. OK. Sit down if you have less than 500 connections on LinkedIn. And if you don't know, then you probably don't. OK. Sit down if you have not been to LinkedIn in the last seven days. OK? Sit down if you have not posted a video on LinkedIn. OK? Pardon? Ever on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, uh, you know, in your, in your member profile. Sit down if you have not written a long form post on LinkedIn using the publisher platform. OK, so a round of applause for the four or five people standing for. So if you doze off for the rest of the session, uh, we've learned a few things. Please have a seat. Thank you. Um, which is at a minimum, and I always say this, the free LinkedIn tool is extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And in today's world, uh, where everything is a pay to play, I am a big fan of anything that is free and powerful, right? So I would say that before you do anything else on networking, these few tips around you know, your profile will actually get you a step closer. The second thing that I'd like you to do is on your phone, please go to your LinkedIn app since everybody was on there. And in the LinkedIn app at the very bottom, there is a little figurine of two uh, people. It's, it's your second one usually. Go to that and switch on your nearby function. So your nearby function is, uh, uh, how many of you guys have heard of nearby before? OK, it's a new function. I love this function. So what you should do, and this is the starting point of you know, the people in this room, is the second, the second one over there. And you, the second one says, find nearby. And it says off. All you have to do is turn it on, but you need your Bluetooth on. And what you'll find this will do is everybody in this room that has nearby on, you can now see their LinkedIn profiles. So you can actually, without asking each other who's sitting to the left or right of you, you can actually not only make a connection through talking to people, but just know that one thing that actually connects all of you today is all of you have attended the networking session. So immediately you have 50 new people that you now know and can connect with. So take a look at that. It gives you a real flavor of who's in the room and also allows you to meet and connect with people. 
My one advice is when you send a LinkedIn connection invite to people, always put a little bit of a note. Hey, we shared a session together at NASCOM. I was sitting next to you. Don't be generic. Try to actually make it so that people remember or have a context as to why you're reaching out. OK, so like I said, if you've learned nothing else on this session, you've done really well, because I think I've given you two solid trips so far. So let me get into the actual session itself. So one of the things uh, about LinkedIn and uh, why I love working here is the vision of LinkedIn is to connect the world's workforce and connect them to opportunity, right? And the way we operationalize our vision has changed because the working landscape has really changed. So when you think about the three things that are really confronting uh, the work environment is uh, one is the changing skills uh, requirements and the preferred skills by employers. I don't know if you have seen the India Workforce Report that we released with the National Skills Registry, but what we've seen is that there is a huge skill gap even in India between desired skills and actual. When you think about the most popular uh, jobs right now, whether it's a data scientist or it's a, you know, a cloud architect um, or a site reliability engineer, many of these job descriptions, which are now the most popular jobs, didn't exist as jobs even five years ago, right? And when you think about, um, recently there was a great uh, survey about the most important soft skills and hard skills. When you think about persuasion, you think about collaboration, uh, many of these softer skills are not even taught in MBA programs, let alone taught through online modules. So we have a workforce that is increasingly uh, ill-equipped to be able to uh, learn in the formal programs um, and be able to get the jobs that are now the most in-demand jobs. And that's why their network is very, very important for them to coach and mentor them through some of those skills. Think about the fact that many of the softer skills that you all have learned have typically come from you talking to a mentor or an advisor or somebody that helps you think through a difficult problem, right? It's difficult to actually find that kind of experience through formal training. The second big trend that we've actually seen is the always on consumer. You know, just yesterday I posted on LinkedIn an article called The Sick Day is Dying. Nobody takes sick days anymore because consumers are always on and there's increased pressure even if your manager says, you're sick, take a sick day. If you get an email from your customer, you're going to have to respond. So this idea that the sick day is dying because you're working from home is because of the, the ability for you to connect and respond to that email. But that means that, you know, how many of you all have taken a sick day in the last year? Yeah, exactly. How many of you all have been sick in the last year? Yeah, exactly. So, the, and you do that not because of your corporate culture, but oftentimes the, the consumer. And the third is the changing B2B buyer, right? The fact that B2B buyers have gotten a lot smarter is a blessing and a curse. Many of them are actually uh, want to know who you are before they meet you. God forbid you don't have a photograph on your LinkedIn profile. You're not even a legitimate person. I wouldn't even take a meeting with you. Uh, you get checked out before all these meetings. Um, no, no matter who you are, like you will get checked out before they accept the meeting. And in addition to that, they're reading a lot of content about your industry before they accept the meeting. When I started at IBM in 1999, you know, the phone calls from the client came to the field sales rep of, come over and talk to me about, you know, um, enterprise software or middleware or business process management, right? Uh, today, they're getting all that content online. And they're getting that content from people who are sharing that content in their networks. So they're very smart before they come in. So if you think you're still a business person that can get a nice meeting and you can do coffee and drinks and you're not prepared for those meetings, be beware because the buyer is changing. So all these reasons make networking extremely important. Another aspect of this is the way you network has evolved. And I'll give you a specific example over here. I call it the dads on Facebook syndrome. Um, so at a logical point in the last couple of years, dads, all your dads joined Facebook, right? And it was a terrifying moment in our history in digital media when all our dads joined Facebook because they had no idea what they were doing with Facebook. And they were putting all kinds of stuff, and they, were, they really liked Facebook, you know, including, including my father-in-law. Uh, but he, like, will post something and then like his own post and then share his own post. 
And, and a lot of that is because he hasn't quite figured out how you know, online relationships and conversation work um, because that's not the world that he comes from, right? Now, all those people, that's what's happening also between platforms. People who have gotten used to Facebook, are not used to LinkedIn, are using the same tonality and things that have gotten them comfortable with Facebook onto LinkedIn. And all of you guys have seen the repercussions of that. People backlash when you actually do Facebook stuff on LinkedIn. So your personal and professional network are bifurcating. So networking in that sense, right, um, really makes a difference. I mean, not to bring up a cricket controversy, but everything that's going on right, right now is the ability to not filter what you're saying. If you think you can sit around a bar, which is Facebook, and just talk to your friends and family about certain things, including your parents, apparently, um, and think that you can have that same thing when you're being amplified on a professional network or on TV, you're going to get into deep water. So this is the added complexity to the changing workplace, which is why I think that the most important thing is that when you reach professionals, you've got to reach them the right way, right? Be very thoughtful about your professional networking strategy. Your brand depends on it. Your professional reputation depends on it. And that's why, I, in my mind, it should start with not only the tone and the people that you meet over here, but take it to the next level and scale the way you network. You know, the thousand people that you have in your LinkedIn network in today's world is not enough. To, there used to be a time we say, I have a thousand people connections on LinkedIn. That's a microcosm. We have 590 million members globally. Right? Think about the business that can be done if you just connected with the right people the right way. So a lot of it is figure out that arbitrage, right? If you know a thousand, how do I make sure that I know the right thousand? Are you finding that? Are you just accepting everybody's invite? Or are you actually figuring out who are the right people for your business for you to connect with? And a lot of people make this mistake. They use up their connections for anybody that wants to connect with them, which is they're so grateful that they have volume. But on LinkedIn, it's about quality, right? So it's really important that you need to connect with them the right way and the right professionals. So uh, this is what LinkedIn looked like. What is the one thing that you'll notice, a couple of things you'll notice about the new LinkedIn mobile app that's very important? It's one word, actually. It starts with C, ends with a T. Close. Keep going. Content. LinkedIn is a content platform, right? And so when you think about it, you can actually post video, you can post photographs, you can post short micro updates, you can post long form, but really the platform's relevancy score rewards people who not only post content, but engage with other people's content. And that's the biggest mistake people make on LinkedIn, is that they assume that I have now arrived on LinkedIn I have now put this post about my life lessons in corporate whatever, and I've now published, and now you wait, and you hope that people come. And they say, Virginia, I, only 100 people viewed my, you know, viewed my post, so it's not for me. It's because they've never read anything from anybody else. They've never commented on anybody else's content. They've never shared anybody else's content. So if you have thought leadership around AI, don't assume that 590 million members can't also have something to say about AI. Read somebody else's point of view. Leave a comment for them. In that comment, connect to your post as well to say, hey, I have some additional thoughts. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't make it this one-sided loudspeaker relationship with your professional network. By the way, you would not do that in your real-life network either, where you get into uh, a round table with peers and be the only one talking. So connecting, sharing, liking, engaging is the equivalent of active listening, right? And your relevancy score goes much higher. Relevancy score is what you need for your organic post to get amplified by the platform to people you don't know. It will work a lot more if you're active on the platform with your network, not just talking, yep? So that's, that's the main thing is think about your content and what you post. Now, one tip over here that I want to share is, if you are known for marketing, 
and you're trying to potentially make a career transformation to sales, like what I did a few years ago. Start thinking about being thoughtful about the content you should post. Should start featuring things that you want to be known for, not just what you're already known for. And one way to audit this for you is look at your skills and endorsements and see what you're known for in your network. And this is the biggest thing that people don't know. Your network has a pretty good sense of what you're known for. And so you might think that you are known for leadership, but your network says you're known for digital marketing. Maybe you should put some content out there on leadership, right? So start using LinkedIn to reposition not just your, yourself and your brand. It will allow you to build a new network around new topics, right? So start sharing content on leadership. Start engaging with people who write about leadership. Start following them. That helps you start a new network within your network. OK, a couple of minutes on how to becoming a networking ninja. We've already talked about this, which is updating and personalizing your profile. Obviously, keep it updated. Recruiters and business contacts are looking at it. Please do not use your passport photograph for your LinkedIn update nor should you use your photograph from your last vacation of you being very far away in the mountains. People love those mountain pictures for some reason, like in the hills. No, I need to be able to see your face. I need to know just enough so when I meet you. But passport photographs are scary. You don't look like someone I want to meet if you use your passport photograph. So a pleasant business professional picture is always in high resolution. Secondly, you're allowed to have a um, one-liner summary or descriptor right below your profile. Be thoughtful about what that says. If you are known for more than just marketing, maybe talk about you know, the other things that you're, you're, you're known for. On my profile, in addition to being a sales and marketing executive, I've put that I'm the chief mixologist at Gin and Topics, which is a hashtag that I run. I love content. I love writing. I want people to know that. I put that in my summary. Of course, when you go to my profile, you'll see I work at LinkedIn, etc. But I have other identities as well that I want people to know. All right, next one is around improving search ranking. This comes from the relevancy score. We've spoken about it a lot. But it's very important for you to know that when you actually type in somebody's name on LinkedIn, you see, you know, 500 Abhishek's. How do you know that yours is not the first one? It's driven by how much you're keeping your profile updated and making sure that it's very active. So, Organic search on LinkedIn works much the same way for both recruiters and otherwise as Google does. So assume that the same rules apply and that you need to keep it updated. If you haven't touched your profile in many years, don't assume that people can find you organically either, right? Especially recruiters who run searches. We have a functionality called candidates like lookalike candidates. You can put in the guy that previously did a job at your company and say, find me all the candidates that look like that guy across all the parameters, you know, experience, school, et cetera. You're not going to show up as a lookalike candidate if you haven't updated your profile because it actually picks up a lot of that, right? So it's machine learning. Take advantage of that. Engage and listen. Sorry, that moved off a little bit. So this is, this is what we spoke about, which is make sure that it's a two-way relationship. And make sure that you actually are giving yourself enough time to spend on LinkedIn. So pick, for example, when you know on your commute or something. Just scroll through it, read a couple of articles. The most important thing if you're creating a video, and this is important for the content creators over here, is LinkedIn video, people, people read LinkedIn video. They don't watch LinkedIn video. And the reason is that they're usually commuting, and it's on mute by design, because we're traveling somewhere, et cetera. Always assume people have their volume on mute. So the videos that do the best have a little bit of content built into that as well. Or when you post your video, leave a little summary on what the video is about. Otherwise, it's this really weird video of just a talking head, and you don't know why that video was there. So there's no problem doing a homegrown video. Just make sure that you do it with a little bit of you know, what it's about in the descriptor, because like you, other people are reading video, not watching. Using hashtags and joining groups. It is remarkable. A lot of people don't know that um, groups are still alive and kicking, and groups is really, really powerful. Uh, so I would say join some of the groups, engage in those groups, start a group. And hashtags is a new functionality that we started, uh, which also helps your organic reach, which is when you put a post out, let's say, on leadership, just make sure you do, there's some suggested hashtags. 
use hashtags like you would on Twitter. And the reason is that when someone searches on leadership as a hashtag, your post will come up. So you may not be in their network, but they'll find you. You'll find a lot of the people that want to connect with you, connect with you because of something they read and they found you valuable, right? So you had a nice post, someone wants to connect with you or at least follow you. So be interesting and be interested, right? That's the most important thing. Being interesting is about the content that you post. Being interested is the engagement you do with other people. That's a two-way networking relationship on the platform. Highlighting your website. Now, this is a pivot, and I just have a couple of seconds over here. In addition to your particular page, make sure that you use your profile to actually amplify your companies. Now, this is where people have a confusion. Do not use your personal profile to be your company profile. You're two different people. You are not your company as much as you believe that you are. What you should be doing is creating a separate company page, which is very similar to your personal profile, but it's built for your company. You can always amplify on your personal network what you post in the company, but keep the two identities separate. And at the very top where you see over here, visit website, you should connect it back to your regular website as well. But make sure that you actually keep your company identity on LinkedIn separate. It is free. There's amazing analytics of who follows and visits your company, amazing analytics about what kind of content they want. So take advantage of the free platform for your company. Do not use your own identity to do that because it gets very confusing. You don't get the benefits of the company page. And then finally, the last couple of points is around supporting your colleagues. If you are an entrepreneur or CEO, make sure that you amplify and share and acknowledge your colleagues at your company, right? A lot of people don't have the networks that you have, don't have the reach that you have. If you have an employee that's done a great job and they've been recognized at a company event, take a picture, put it on your network, be giving, right? It's very important that your employees feel like you are their champion and their advocate in the social domain. Don't just make it about you. Make sure that you lift all your, your colleagues up. Also help them make introductions. If your network has thousands of people, help a junior salesperson get a meeting with somebody through a warm introduction and use InMail. Don't just save it for yourself, use it for your company. And let me give you a parting thought, which is around my favorite book. Um, and I think what comes to the crux of great professional networking, which is a book by Adam Grant called Give and Take. The world is made of givers, takers, and matchers. Who do you think wins the most in the world? Givers. Who do you think loses the most in the world? So givers win the most and lose the most. The book is about how do you actually be a winner that wins, a giver that wins all the time. I say this because networking cannot just be about matching. Networking has to be about giving, and it's about starting with the point of view is, I'm going to come to the network. Yes, I'm going to give content. Yes, I'm going to amplify my employees. Yes, I'm going to recognize people. Yes, I'm going to help make connections. And just starting with that philosophy that I don't just come to LinkedIn when I want a job. I don't just come when I need to find a contact. I just don't come when I need something is when you'll get the best benefit out of this. So I want to end with uh, all of you guys used nearby. If you haven't actually done it, Please connect with each other. I hope this session was valuable. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. I have open nearby as well. And I really appreciate your time and attention on this post-lunch session. Thank you. Yeah, can you take a question? Um, we can do it offline, so I'll just be at the back. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for such an interactive session. Well, uh, let me tell you that all the profiles which I have with me are LinkedIn profiles. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you once again. I would request Mr. Sri Shagarwal to come oh, forward and felicitate, ma'am. Thank you uh, so much for this awesome session. Oh, thank you. I think uh, after this session, we are feeling more linked to each other. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. Have a great rest of the conference.